What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Coast M Fishing. Sit down video today. Today is a rigging video. Now I've done a couple of rigging videos in the past. I will put the links in the description below, some basic rigs. But recently I've started to do a lot of banking or deep, deep dropping or bottom fishing as you would call it. If you watch your recent videos, couldn't do much inshore fishing, but I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to do a lot of banking and bottom fishing. From that, I kind of had to learn a couple different rigging techniques because the normal banking rig, which I showed before, while it works well, it doesn't always work that well in deeper waters. So today's rigs are rigs to use for bottom fishing in deeper waters. Deeper waters meaning from 300, 350 feet, all the way up to maybe 600 feet. We do all our hand line. I mean, you could put it on your rod, you could put it on electric reel, whatever you want to do. Hand line is the way for me. So I'm going to show you two basic methods. One is very simple, costs you almost nothing, and you just have to learn how to tie the knot. It's a T-knot, and I'll show you do that in a couple ways. I'll do it one here up front with a thicker line or a rope, then I'll try to get overhead view with a camera, just showing you up close how to do it, and give you, give you the step by step. The other one is the use of three-way swivels. That one's pretty simple. Um, I'll just show you that in the end, because that's what I have used recently and been quite successful with it. This is my two casters or hand lines here that I use. Each are set up with one is with the T-knot. So I just unloose this and show it to you quickly. This is the basic T-knot. Very simple, similar to the old banking rig, but just a little bit of a variation. And the other one that I have is the three-way swivel, which you would see on the caster itself. Three-way swivels come in two different types. I'll show you both of them. I'll show you how to rig them, pretty simple. So first up is the T-knot. Now I'm using this really thick line, rope, slash, anything to try and give you a visual up like this. Afterwards, I'll give you an overhead, uh, but it's a pretty simple knot to use once you learn how to do it. Firstly, you start like you're making a little loop for a banking rig. You take the loop and then make not one overhand, but you make two or even three overhand knots. Just like that, and you pull it together. So as similar to the old banking rig, let's you make two or three, I think I recommend three, and you start up like this, just a loop. Now to make the T effect on the line, you have to grab the loop, put the loop to the, loop to the bottom, and then just simply cross your hand like that. And you come with this, something just like this. I'll show you that again. Start up like this, and then you just cross over, and you come up like this and you have an effect like this, right? So the, the loop below and you have this sort of loop on top and this is how the basics of the T-knot starts. Once you have this, you see you take these two here and you go over each other. I recommend five times. One, two, three, four, five. And you have that space in the middle there. Then you take your loop and you go through that space Just like that. So you have on either side and a loop below, and then you simply pull them together. When you pull them together, try and just make sure you straighten it out so they become as even as possible, right? With the rope, it's a little bit difficult because it's rope, but with the, in the hand line, the normal monofilament, it comes pretty easy. So I'll just pull them together, tighten them as best as you could. Again, with the rope, it's not going to be the nicest. With the rope, it's not going to be as uniform as with the nylon. But check it out, that's the essence of the T-knot right there. I can show it to you. It looks like a T. And this piece hangs off like this. You can see it's a little different from the regular banking rig, where you just make the loop. Now I'll show you overhead with the fishing line. You might understand that a little bit more. This is a, a good view to show you. All right, guys, now for the overhead view of the T-knot. Very simple, same knot I'll make for a banking, normal banking ring or up and down ring. Starting off with a loop. You can make it as long or as short as you want. There are two ways to put the hook on. I'll show you afterwards. So, we have the loop. And we're going to make three. You can make four or five, but I'm going to make three overhand knots. One. Two. Three. And you just pull that together. Before you tighten it, you should moisten it. 
Oh, what's our bottle of water already? Just moistening it up. And then we're gonna pull it together and make it tight. Alright, so that's the start of it there. Now once you have that, I'm gonna grab the two opposite sides of the line with the loop below. So the loop is there. And you're gonna grab two sides of the line right here. Now once you have them, it's gonna cross over two sides of the line. So we come across, we have a cross there. So we have one loop below, another loop here, and you come up to the top here. And you're gonna put your finger below here. And you come up to something like this. So we'll show that over again. Your loop is below. This is your loop. You cross the line, just like that. So now you have the loop below, another sort of loop there. And after this, gonna get your fingers in there and end up something just like this. When you have this now, you're gonna go this over the next one five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Then you have this space here, right here, and your loop knot. You take your loop and you're going through that space Then you're holding the two ends, the loop is below, and you're bringing them together gently, slowly, slowly, and then you're moistening it again, moisten the entire knot, make sure it's, the, the T is close to the knot, and then you just pull them together, as tight as you could. And there you have it. You can straighten it out as you go along, make sure it's uniform. Let's get them together. And that is your basic, simplest way to make a tea nut. Now there are more sophisticated ways, which is a little more complex, but this is just the simplest way that I have found. So you see the tea nut there, hanging on the line like that. Now you have two ways to pull on the hook. Just like a normal banking rig, you have your loop, so you can just bend the edge of end of it through the eye of the hook. And there you have it. Hook is on and it's floating in the water. The other way to put the hook on is you can cut one side of the loop the end of the loop here so we're going up to the top of the knot I usually recommend cutting the one below as close as possible all right so now you have the T knot and you have one line coming out to the end of it so now you just tie a hook to the end using your regular old uni knot all right should moisten it pull it down so there you have t-knot with your single hook trim off the excess close as far as you want simple setup all right so that's the end of the t-knot demonstration i'm going to show you the three-way swivel pretty quickly so there are two types of three-way swivels <coughs> one is this one it's like a bigger swivel and a smaller swivel inside there somehow made in the manufacturing check it out and then there's this one which is a i think the original three-way swivel just has three arms so using this is pretty simple you simply have to attach one side of the line to this side another side to this side and then the hook comes out from this i'll just do one quick quickly and show you guys it works either way for same same similar concept for this one as well line here line here and this one is pretty easy identified which one you hope goes on is the smaller one 
This one, you could probably line it up and see the orientation, see which one is most, which one looks straighter or which one could be the one, the arm coming out. So it looks, looks pretty good there. So it's gonna tie, line onto this end. Now I use uni knots to attach all my knots to swivels, hooks, etc. If you have a better knot, you go right ahead. If you know, do not tie uni knot, I have a video on it already. Also a lot of videos out there on YouTube. You always moisten your knots, so you moisten it here, you pull it together. So that's one end. Trim off the excess. So we have one end attached. We're gonna attach the other end. Same uni knot. Bring it together. So we have both sides attached. Trim off the excess. Right, and that's it. You have the three ways attached. Now for this, you're gonna attach the hook. Now how long you wanna attach the, the hook end is up to you. I recommend eight inches minimum. You can go as much as 16 inches. Some people go even longer. And the attach hook is pretty simple again. You have a, you have a piece of line, a length of line. And tie one end to the three ways swivel. This is the rig that I caught my big red fish with, and this is the rig that we usually use all the fishing back in by the rigs. And for the end, you attach the hook. Same uni knot. This one is pretty simple. You just need to tie a bunch of uni knots. Make sure your knots are good. You can always put stoppers in the end. I usually do that. Meaning that a tag end knot. Some people don't like to do it, but for me, I always try to always do it. Just for safety. I don't lose that big fish because of a lack of a tag end knot. Trim that up. So there you go. Three reversible with hook attached. Pretty simple like that. You can put two, three, five, how much ever three ways, how much ever hooks you want is up to you. The spacing, like I said, can vary between 18 inches to 24 inches between your swivels or even longer. And your arms for the hook, I say eight inches minimum. Maybe I recommend about a 12 inch for snappers. This never fails. The other three ways swivel, um, it's pretty the same way as well. You tie the one end to the next and then the hook comes out from the smaller swivel. All right guys, I hope you guys understood the overhead tying of the knots. I know it could be a little confusing. Hopefully the camera angle was okay. But there's the two variations. The first one I did is as simple as can be. So the first option for the knots guys is, is the T-knot. This is it right here. Simple as can be, as effective as can be. And like I said, you could cut the top of one arm for the hook or you could leave it as the loop. How I usually set this up is from the, the leader, whatever leader I'm using, I'll tie the hook, I'll tie the sinker loop first. One, this is a normal loop knot. So this is for your sinker. I'll have one T-knot there. I'll come to the next level. I'll tie another T-knot, simple again. Let's do it quickly for you guys. One, two, three. Pull it together. Moisten it. Tighten it up. And then remember you're holding the two ends and we're crossing them. Then you get your fingers between there. Just like that. And you go in one, two, three. Four, five, and we take him a loop, going through there, and we put on the two ends together. All right, we'll pull it all the way, moisten it first. And as you're pulling it, if you see one looking not as even as the next end, you know, you could, you could straighten it out, pull it back out, try to get them as even as possible. Just come together. Yeah, you have another T knot. So this is how you go. How much ever hooks you want to go? Start off with the sinker loop. One hook. Another T knot for our next hook. You can do three, four, five. Up to you. Totally up to you. And the size of hooks. Again, for salmon and crocro, I recommend uh, number seven or number six J hook. Uh, when you're going deeper for the bigger snapper, I use the number four. Uh, Mr. Keaton, they use number three. 
A lot of people like these circle hooks. If you're using circle hooks, use the 3X or 4X strong, uh, number 9 or number 10, 9 or 10 or um, if you're going for the big snapper. Smaller fish you could use probably mm, 7 or um, 6 or 7 or for the plum head and the salmon and stuff like that. This way, these ways of setting up your own lines, it costs you almost next to nothing. Um, like I said, these three swivels, maybe maybe three dollars each, and the hooks, maybe three dollars each total, maybe so that is six by three, maybe twenty dollars to make a rig to fish five hundred feet of water. The T knot is just paying for the hooks. So if the hooks is, hooks are two dollars each, three hooks, six dollars it costs you. If the shark bursts it off, it ain't hurting you no way. Or your sinker might cost something. But these are my two two basic ways I bottom fish. The three way swivel, I use it for the deeper waters. I have had success with it. We use it by the rigs, we have caught a lot of fish with it. It holds up once your knots are good. So practice tying your knots and you're good to go with the three-way swivel. And for fishing for the salmon and the crocro and the plum head and the smaller reds, you don't need nothing more than a T knot. It's as simple as that. This is my T knot rig. Um, I probably you'll be probably seeing some footage in between here where I'll be using both of them and catching the fish. I mean, it works. So both of them work guys, your choice to see which one you want to use. Like I said, I recommend the T-Nut up to like maybe about 350 feet of water. If you're going deeper, I'd say use a three-way swivel. One other thing to consider is sometimes the three-way swivel doesn't work as effective if the current is too soft, because the line kind of falls to the side. But once the current picks up a little bit, the three-ways work pretty great and you catch a lot of fish with it. So I hope you guys understood and enjoyed this episode of Coastal Fishing. Some little more advanced rigging techniques for bottom fishing. And I have a couple more, even more unique ones. I hardly use it myself, but I know of it. I want to try to use it some more. And uh, maybe I'll do another video of those in the future. If you have any questions or comments, leave it below. I'll try to help you out any way I can. Um, if you want the sizes of the hooks, three visible sinkers that I recommend, I could always let you know. Basic is the 16 ounce for the Dongli Islands. And like I said, basic number seven, number six J hooks for banking. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful, hope it was useful. Anything I learn, you know, I try to show you guys and I'll continue to do so as long as I can. Thanks for watching. Till the next video, keep fishing, fish on.